Good evening. Let me just say it's it's a tough day in Indiana basketball. You know when when you when you lose a legend like Bob Knight, who meant the world to me, man, in terms of my growth. Um, I mean, he basically shaped my whole career. So this program will truly miss a, an icon, man. Uh, it's hard to really describe in words what he meant to me, but boy, I wouldn't be sitting in this seat today if it wasn't for Bob Knight. So to his family, you know, I wish him nothing but the best moving forward. If there's anything I could ever do, I'm going to always be here for him. So with that being said, I'll open it up for questions. Yeah, Coach, uh, obviously with, with Knight, there's a lot of things that were impressive. I'm curious, what impressed you the most about him? You know, I grew up with nothing. You know, from a beautiful family of 12 brothers and sisters and mom and dad. And I think what impressed me the most when he recruited me and he came to the house, he promised me that, that I would get an education and that I would play for the best basketball program in the country. And that's all I needed to hear, somebody to give me an opportunity. So that impressed me. It impressed, sure and hell impressed my mother probably more than me because I was the only one that was able to go to college and, and get an education and graduate. Mike, Mike, you've talked about coaches you've worked with, coaches that have, you know, Cotton Fitzsimmons and, and Larry Brown, guys like that. What, I guess in your day-to-day -day approach to the job, what are the things that you think you take most from Coach Knight, whether it's the way he taught or, you know, so, some of the stuff he ran, just to, to maybe the way he carried himself? It was all about his preparation, people. I mean, we were always prepared to play. And that's so important. You know, you can will yourself to win, but do you, can you really prepare yourself to really win? And that's what he did when he was here, man. He prepared guys to play at a, a higher level than most of the teams that he played against, or coached against. Um, I would say his preparation probably stands out more than anything. Uh, because we never went into a game not knowing what the hell we were doing. We didn't win every game, but but we were in a lot of games. And the games that we lost wasn't because we weren't prepared. I know Bob has influenced your style, but how do you bring his what he did and his accomplishments and his um, – legacy, move it forward to the current generation of players? Do you talk about it? Do you show clips? Like, why do you incorporate that and get them to, you know, because you're dealing with a generation that didn't get to see him coach or didn't get to see your teams um, play. So I'm just curious how you move that forward and, and, and teach that. Well, I haven't changed a whole lot in terms of how I coach. Um, you know, I, I've been some, I, I give some and I, I take some, you know, I think coaching is coaching. Um, and I truly believe, I've always believed this, all players want to be coached. It's just finding the right buttons to coach them. And that's what Knight was so great at doing. Yeah, he lost some players along the way that couldn't take it or struggled with the way he coached and they moved on. But for the most part, the guys that that played for him here and stuck around, they enjoyed playing for him because he got the most out of them. And I'm going to continue to push guys and make sure that they do all the things necessary on the court as well as off the court. That's That's how I learned. And I think I've turned out just fine in that regard. So... 
that's something he instilled in me when I played here. And, and while I'm coaching this Indiana team, I'm going to do the same thing. Mike, uh, in a previous job, I covered Royce Waltman, who was an assistant here right after you stopped playing. And uh, we would talk on occasion off the record. And, and one day I asked him about Coach Knight and why he was so loyal to him. And Royce said something, well, I'm not quoting it directly, but he said something like, well, he had to be here to understand it. You were here. You understand it. What, where does the magnetism of that loyalty among his ex-players, his ex-coaches, when does that start? And how has it kind of fed itself through your own life experiences since? No, it, is, it started from the time he recruited me, man. You know what I mean? He held true to everything he said he would offer me. And sure, I didn't win a national title, but hell, I won a Big Ten title, a gold medal with him an NIT championship with him. So I was in the trenches with him. And that meant more to me than anything because he believed in me. And as a coach, hell, I believed in him. Shit, he was one of the best coaches out there. He was winning national titles, I mean. And it's hard to, to really describe it unless you've gone through it. But if I had to do it over again, I'd do it the same way. I really would because it, it really shaped me as a person. It really, it really did. Coach, through both your actions and your words, ever since you really took this job, you've always kind of emphasized bridging the gap between that era of Indiana basketball and the one that you lead now. You've had him back at practice. He's spoke to the team before. What was that like for you to have him back at, at, at the practices and, and kind of speaking to a team that you're leading when he was speaking to you guys? I just wish he was more healthier when he was going through being back here. Because what better person to sit next to and chop it up and talk basketball than Bob Knight? I mean, I'm new to this college game. And... Boy, if he was right, man, it, it would have been unbelievable to sit next to him. and He helped me navigate through the waters of college basketball because he's so brilliant. His mind is just, it was phenomenal in terms of his thought and his process in terms of beating his opponent. I mean, he, he was always two steps ahead of everybody. I always thought that as, as a coach with him. He saw things that, as players, we didn't see. And most great coaches are like that. So that part of it, you know, I being back, you know, I think about that all the time because I can still sit and talk to Larry Brown and some of the guys that I, I've worked with. But I couldn't do that with Coach Knight because he, his health wasn't there. Mike, um, what do you tell your current team about when you played for Coach Knight that you maybe hope that they that sticks with them or that they take into their lives? That they can always count on me. Me being there. That's important. After all the things Coach and I went through over the four years. I went on to play 11 years and he was there every year. Come see me play here and there. And as a coach, he was always there as a coach. I could lean on him, hell, he, he was the reason why I got my first coaching job because he had to make a phone call for me to an owner. And he made that call and the next day I was hired first time assistant in the NBA. So I would hope my players can respect me enough after they're done playing for me that they can reach back and call me and say, hey, Mike, can you help me if, if I need it? That's more important to me than anything and making sure that they're doing all the things necessary while they're here with me on and off the court. That's 
That's what I went through. Mike, we, we talked about um, his preparation and how deep he would get into that and have players ready. And I've heard a lot of players say the, the games were much easier than the practices. But during the games, his genius would also come out because there are, are always times where things don't go the way that you expected them to go. But he was able to see things that a lot of people couldn't see. What did you learn? What did you see? What are some of the examples of that? Well, you know, I mean, it's hard to describe it unless you're there on the floor and you're playing the game, you know, and going through it. Um, I think one game that truly stands out is over in Puerto Rico playing for the gold medal. And that meant so much to coach because of all the turmoil that surrounded that gold medal. And I remember playing Puerto Rico and and we were up, I think, 13 with about four or five on the clock. Thought we could really coast out and win the gold medal. And they made a hell of a run to cut our lead to three. And I was the captain of that team. And I remember him calling the timeout. And he grabbed me by my jersey and he pulled, pulled me into his face. And from the viewer's eyes, you know, you guys probably thought, hey, he's, he's up to no good. And he pulled me and he said, Woody, don't let us lose the gold medal. And we went back out and went on a 9-0 run to bring the gold medal home. It's just the little things. I mean, he could have not pulled me in and just said, hey, come on, let's, 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 let's go win this thing. But he came to the, the main source, and that was me being the captain. And the fact that he pulled me in never once entered my mind. It was what he said. And it registered. We got the job done, won the gold medal, and came home. Mike, uh, obviously, we all found out the news uh, yesterday evening. I'm just wondering when and how did you hear the news, and just what's the last day been like for you since you, you heard the news? Well, we had practice. You know, after practice, I went in to steam and shower, and, and Tim Garl came in and told me he had passed. And, it's just, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. Next question, please. Mike, you've, you've mentioned that story several times of, of Bob Knight making the call to, to help you get your first coaching job. What do you think it was about him that garnered that respect from people that weren't his players or, or weren't his assistant coaches. When you go through the grind with him, the respect factor is so high. And we respected each other both ways based on what I went through the four years that I was here. And it never wavered all those years. So I wouldn't have expected anything else. You know, I knew I could pick that phone up and he make that call for me. He never would have told me no. That's just the respect factor and the friendship and the brotherhood that we had all those years. I mean, it was special. I mean, it's, it's hard to describe it, guys, but boy, it was special. Mike, February of 2020, when everybody was back here together for that game against Purdue, when all those former players and you guys all got one more chance to be around coach for that day, what still now stands out from that afternoon, that evening, that weekend for you about sharing that time together? It's like old times, you know. You think back when he coached here, we had a reunion every summer where we got together for a weekend and just chopped it up, played golf, and got a chance to talk to guys that you hadn't seen in a while. And this was every year. So 
that was like a reunion, bringing him back. And we needed to bring him back. He needed to be back here, man. I mean, this is Bob Knight's house. You know, make no mistake about it. So he had to be back. And I thought all the players that turned out and the fan support that we got that night for him was, it was unbelievable. And who's your nation is going to miss him, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, he's the greatest coach that ever graced the college basketball floor.